It's a day, if it were to take place in ancient Athens, would have been aptly described as a day such as is reserved only for gods, heroes, giants, and legends. The country remembers a man who was at the nucleus of the National Alliance of Kenya, NAC, the springboard for the movement that would later remove the Kanu regime from power to usher in the Kibaki administration. I can almost say, Toshagari Sasa. Those close to him talk of a leader who held great promise for the reform journey that began with the advent of multi-party democracy in Kenya. He loved people and uh, he wanted fairness uh, uh, for every person to have a fair chance to really achieve their God-given potential. And uh, he was a great optimist. He believed in the goodness of uh, human beings. And uh, he always wanted to see the best in everything. And uh, this is what really drove him uh, in life, to make friends across the board. He did have friends in all communities, in different parties, different religions, not just in Kenya, but across the world. Zayn Lira took us both under his wings as his uh, children, political children, as it were. And we just lived on until uh, when they passed on. Uh, the choice was who amongst his political children should inherit the, or take over the mantle of uh, political leadership. And uh, a group of us, the late George Captain, uh, myself and others, we actually sat and uh, discussed what we do. And uh, I, in particular, said to them uh, that uh, amongst all of us, the oldest child is Mike, and I think we should all give him that uh, respect, not challenge him uh, for the leadership, and that if any one of us had the ambition, we should all bear our ambitions and work for our elder brother. Even though most Kenyans only remember Wamalwa's public profile as a national leader, his friends and relatives give insights into his private and behind-the-scenes actions that shaped not only the lives of those he came into contact with, but also machinations that shaped the reform movement. He was a man who would come in the evening, we sit with him at the gate, chat, talk about the current affairs, the politics of the country and some other social things. So from there, one day in a safra he asked me what was my dream. What was I was thinking to do instead of that job of cutting the, the home? So I said, I've been thinking that if I become a driver, that was my dream of just becoming a driver. So the following day in the morning, he gave me 20,000 shillings to come and pay for a driving course at a rocket driving school. So he gave me the money. I went and paid for the course. After I completed my course, after six months, and came back with a driving license, then he told me, can you take back the uniforms? Come, I'll employ you. So he employed me before even I could gain experience of driving. Just after a driving course, I was employed as a driver without even asking for experience. If we can learn the humility to realize that any leader to be a leader must be supported by others, even greater people than himself. Any leader must stand on the shoulders of other leaders and even greater leaders than himself. Otherwise, there will be no way anybody can be a leader. We shall continue jostling for places to take parts and the other one is pushing you and so forth and so on. His growth in politics was not easy. It was a struggle. He was not 
on the right side of the Kanu regime. And for this, he paid and paid heavily in terms of sacrifice uh, for his family and himself. And uh, uh, he had it very rough under the Nyai regime. And eventually, when he joined forces with others in the opposition and uh, uh, brought about the regime change of 202, and he became vice president, he believed that time had come for Kenya to realize its dream. But even uh, before he passed away, the truth is that he had become a bit disillusioned by uh, what had been achieved at the time, what was going on at the time. Uh, uh, when we had talked about fighting corruption, we could still see corruption even in the new regime. anglo leasing and other scandals came up. And uh, the commitment towards the uh, realization of a new constitution uh, was seen to be lacking. All these things painted a grim picture that uh, really uh, disillusioned him. When Muse died, we actually debated. We could have gone with uh, Matiba, and I want to now tell you publicly, oh, openly, for the, maybe for the first time, that we actually went <laughs> to meet with Matiba. Okay? And we had a chat with Matiba whether we should, whether we, Muliro's orphans, can work with him or not. We then went and talked to Jaramogi. Okay? So we actually calculated and decided that of the two groups, because they were pulling now apart, of the two groups, Jaramogi had a better vision for the country. And so we, Muliro's orphans, would go and work for, with Jaramogi. And that's when Ford Kenya then was formed. The formation of Ford Kenya would launch Michael Kijanawamalwa onto the national political scene in a way that took the country by storm. He was an expert orator and political strategist that was able to rope in leaders from across ethnic communities to fight the Kanu regime at that time. Now, while I was able to allow work of a rainbow alliance, it broke my heart to read that they are saying they will go to Kasarani and if they lose there, then they will consider other options. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one caution for them. Kwamba, fighting within Kanu, you cannot beat more. <laughs> You cannot beat Moi in his own kitchen. And I do a kiss for America, what's it? We put the America, what's it? Michael Kijana Omalwa was at the center of the push by opposition leaders to force the Kanu regime to accept minimum reforms that would create a fairly level playing field in the 1997 general election. Due to pressure from Wamalwa and other opposition leaders, the Kenya National Assembly transformed itself into an interparliamentary parties group IPPG forum in order to resolve reform demands from millions of Kenyans who fought long battles in the streets of Nairobi and elsewhere prior to and during the Sabah Sabah and National Convention Executive Council, NCEC. The IPPG deal specified legal, institutional and constitutional reforms that led to various bills being introduced, including the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill that was drafted by the Attorney General Emos Wako. The official leader of the opposition and the chairman of Ford Kenya, Mr. Michael Kijana Omalwa, the chairman of the Democratic Party of Kenya, Mr. Mwai Kibaki, and the Ford Asili Secretary General, Mr. Martin Shikuku, feverishly defended the IPPG deal against criticism by NDP leader Raila Odinga and the Ford Asili chairman Kenneth Matiba. Today, many say that Wamalwa and his opposition allies saved Kenya from a constitutional crisis and bloodshed with that IPPG deal. It is the IPPG deal that launched the journey towards the new constitution Kenya realized 13 years later. I'll make the best president in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like in his, for 
bahati yangu nitunukiwe hiyo nafasi the bingo presidential candidates wa not mimi wa malwa nitasupport yule ambaye atatunukiwa nafasi hiyo na nguvu zangu the only way to free our country from tremendous poverty and total collapse of all institutions economic civil judicial and in every other way is for us to come together as wise people work together fight together to remove this government from power as soon as possible after kanu and moi defeated the opposition in 1992 and 1997 Kijana wa Malwa decided to join forces with Mwai Kibaki and Charity Ngilu to beat Moi in the next election in 2002. Raila Odinga was later to come back to this NAC team for a coalition that eventually saw Kibaki win the presidency in 2002. Kijana wa Malwa was appointed Kibaki's vice president. The spirit of compromise and negotiation and coalition building was able to defeat that intent on the part of Kanu and the person in my view who embodied that spirit of compromise and negotiation and engagement um, across various ethnic communities was the person of Michael Wamalwa Kijana who was able then to subordinate his own personal interests to run as the presidential can as a presidential candidate in this country and instead through the NAC coalition to support uh, Honorable Mwai Kibaki who then together you know were able to wrest power from you know from the hands of Kanu he was very very happy uh, when uh, uh, eventually they were able to come back together uh, even after losing Jaramogi he was the first person to support Mwai Kibaki to become the president of this republic it shows that he wasn't a tribalist he was a nationalist he was a kenyan he had grown to become what many leaders in this country have not many leaders who look at uh, politics through tribal blinkers he supported jaramogi alu and after that he supported mwai kibaki kikuyu even when people said not another kikuyu he said we were not looking for a good or bad kikuyu we are looking for a leader who can fix this economy But soon after the NAC regime took over power, Kijana wa Malwa was to see his dreams for Kenya begin to hit brick walls. The new faces in government soon began to disappoint him. But even uh, before he passed away, the truth is that he had become a bit disillusioned by uh, what had been achieved at the time, what was going on at the time. Uh, uh, when we had talked about fighting corruption we could still see corruption even in the new regime anglo leasing and other scandals came up and uh, the commitment towards the uh, realization of a new constitution uh, was seen to be lacking all these things painted a grim picture that uh, really uh, disillusioned him and that is why when he went to nanyuki and made his famous speech Kenyans will always remember him for that. He was candid and he always wanted what was best for this country. Umalwa left a huge gap in, in the leadership of this country. I think we have to all agree that part of what is eating um, the political psyche of this country is the leadership. We've got a huge problem as a country because the leadership that we have is so tribalized it's so ethnicized it's it's a leadership that operates with ethnic arithmetic in mind it is very calculating at manipulating ethnic sentiment and 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 for me that is a huge problem But secondly we've also got a leadership that is so personality driven it's all about me and what i can get for myself it's a very selfish type of leadership it's a leadership that is intent on accumulating a massive you know gigantic wealth at the expense you know of the kenyan poor 
people are building economic empires on the bones of the poor. Well, Malwa, throughout his political career, was not embroiled in any corruption. He never acquired extra wealth. He died, you know, as a man with basic, simple means as a middle-class Kenyan. You know, because for him, the wealth of the commonwealth, the commonwealth was more important than personal wealth. Michael Amalwa believed deeply in uplifting the standards of the poor and those that he led. He initiated a number of development projects and building of schools in his personal capacity as member of parliament and as an individual in Bungoma Transoia regions even before the enactment of the CDF. If Wamalo was alive today, the violence of 2007 would not, be, would not have, have happened in this country. Mike was a great guy, that's all I can say. We miss him and uh, we, 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 we believe he was a gift to the family and the nation. Maiko Kijana Omalwa passed away on 23rd August 2003, aged 59 years.